Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Davies with Zions Direct, and I'm here today with Susie Jones, Executive Vice President of Amogee Investments, an affiliate of Zions Bank. Susie oversees 80 employees, managing $11 billion. Susie started with Amogee 17 years ago and was the co-founder of the investment division. Susie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. We had talked earlier today a little bit about the equity market, and now I'd like to talk about the bond market which is a little bit, people think it's a little bit more uh, safe to invest in the bond market, but there are risks involved as well with there investing definitely are. That, that's, a, that's a great, great comment. Uh, many clients do believe that if they buy a treasury bond, and we'll talk about bonds in just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. and first of all, just to clarify, I think we all know that a bond is us actually lending our money mm -hmm. to a government or to a corporation. Um, but the risk with a bond, of course, is interest rate risk. And of course, inflation risk. If you lock into 2% interest for 10 years in interest rates or inflation prices go up, you're kind of losing a, a buying opportunity there. But our experience has been that many of our clients really don't understand the risk of bonds. Uh, they buy a million dollar bond and it's paying 2% for two years. And during that holding period, they get their statement. And the statement says that the bond is worth $995,000. They call and say, oh my gosh, I've lost money. You know, what's happened? Mm -hmm. And we know that what's happened is that interest rates have possibly moved in the market. So if, if I'm holding, my client's holding a million dollar bond and that client holds it to maturity, they're gonna get their million dollars and they're gonna get their 2% interest a year. But if during that two year period, interest rates go up, let's say to 3%, and they're holding a 2% bond, and they want to sell their bond before it matures, who's going to want to buy it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's got a 2% bond to compare to 3%. Now, with the fixed income market, I know that there are different classes as well. Some of the things that we need to look at when we're investing in bonds, uh, starting out with government bonds, uh -huh. corporate bonds, municipal bonds, how do those all fit into the equation? That's a great question. You know, when we look at the bond market, we really um, have sort of three choices, not to, again, oversimplify it, but we can lend our money to a government, an agency of the government, a municipality. We can lend our money to a corporation, and we can lend our money to um, what we call high yield, a high yield type company or a junk bond as it's referred to. So when you look at those three choices, um, a government bond, let's say that again, client wants to buy a two year bond, two year government treasury bond and it's paying 1%. Um, there's no risk there. I mean, hypothetically, the government can't go out of business and so you're gonna get your money when it matures and there's no risk there. So the higher the risk, the higher the return. And so as we move sort of down that ladder, to corporate bonds, a corporation can go out of business. Mm -hmm. And so if you're lending your money to a corporation for two years, you darn well better get more than you would get if you lent it to the US government because you're taking on more risk. Mm -hmm. So if I lend my money to a corporation for two years, I might get 3% or 4%. And then we go down sort of the next level, and that is what we call the high yield bond market, which is the junk bond market. Mm -hmm. And so we've got Billy Bob's Barbecue, who wants to build 500 barbecue stands across the country, and he wants to borrow you know, $10 million or $50 million to do that. And he goes to the public and says, I will lend you, if you'll let me borrow your money for you know, two years to build these barbecue stands, um, I'll pay you 2%. And the client goes, I can get that with the U.S. government. Okay, I'll pay you 4%. I can get that with, you know, American Express in a corporate bond. Okay, how about 6%? Now we're talking. Mm -hmm. Because with that high yield bond, the client is taking more risk. And so they better get a higher return for that. Um, and so those are really sort of those three categories. And we go back to our conversation about asset allocation. Mm -hmm. And so we need to spread our risk out, maybe put some in, in you know, government security, some in corporate bonds, high yield, excuse me, high quality uh, corporate bonds, and then maybe some in high yield. It really depends on the client's client, uh, their, their comfort level. What about another thing that we could look at as far as short, medium, and long-term investing? A, that's another well. great, great question. Uh, those are really sort of our other choices is we've mm -hmm. got those, those sort of three categories of you know mm -hmm. government, corporate, and high yield. And then we go across and we say, okay, it could be a government security short-term, 
intermediate term or long term. So we sort of end up with sort of these nine options. Mm -hmm. um, and so when our clients now look at their at a mutual fund, for example, they're thinking about buying a bond mutual fund, and the name of the bond fund is the XYZ High Yield Intermediate Term Bond Fund, they realize, okay, it's investing in junk bonds mm -hmm. for an intermediate term. Um, or a uh, treasury short-term bond fund. It's gonna be short-term, you know, un under five years. Um, and so, so it really does give that client an understanding of really there's lots of options to diversify with, with, within the bond market. Clients can buy individual bonds if they want to. We talked about the risk a couple of minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And the primary risk is that holding period. If you need to liquidate that bond during that holding period um, and rates have moved against you, they have gone up while you were holding your bond, your bond is not gonna be worth the million dollars that it was um, you know, when you bought it. It will be mm -hmm. if you hold it to maturity, but the risk during that holding period is the volatility of the price of the bond and the underlying uh, value of it. And so for clients to really understand, you're gonna see volatility even if it's a good old bond. Um, bonds are not fixed, the rate might be fixed, but the value of the bond is not fixed during the holding period. It really does react to the market, it reacts to interest rates, it reacts to what's happening in the economy. Um, and so for those clients who are comfortable buying individual bonds, Holders to maturity, no problem. When you buy a mutual fund, you know, if rates move, the entire, all the bonds in that mutual fund will be impacted. Mm -hmm. And so you might see the price of your mutual fund go down if interest rates move up. But if re interest rates move down, as we know they couldn't move down much farther than where they are now, um, if they move down, then the value mm -hmm. of the bond would go up. So bonds are, 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 are an incredible opportunity for clients to diversify. We look again looked at the equity market, we looked at the, the bond market, and really spreading your risk out between all those different asset classes. Um, it's a great opportunity really to, again, to make sure you know what your risk tolerance is and to spread that those investments out among all those different asset classes to really accommodate a little bit more of a smoother ride. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. To see more videos like this, subscribe to the Zions Direct YouTube channel.